Texas has been grappling with below zero temperatures the last few days. And just like California last summer with heat, Texas is now having problems with its electrical system in the cold. And we're going to talk to Joshua Rhodes about that. Uh, he's a professor at the uh, University of Texas at Austin. And uh, the electrical system outages and rolling blackouts, and it's a really big issue down there. So welcome to the interview, Josh. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Why don't you give us an, an overview of, uh, of what Texas is going through right at the moment? Yeah, so I mean, as, as I look out my window, I see a blanket of white snow, which just doesn't happen here. <laughs> uh, if we ever get snow in this part of the country, it's usually just flurries that, you know, last, you know, for an hour or so, they don't stick. But it snowed yesterday and the day before, and it's still there. And so, you know, it's just a bit instructive of like, we're not used to this kind of weather. In fact, um, all 254 counties of Texas uh, at one point were under winter storm warning, which never happens. Uh, Central Texas Weather Bureau issued the, issued the first ever wind chill warning that we've ever had. Um, and so it's just, while I know these are issues, these are things that like folks in the North like deal with on a, a normal Tuesday, <laughs> like this is a very unnormal Tuesday um, for us. Like we, we just don't have this kind of kind of weather are in our infrastructure and it's just not built for it. Now that's the key point here is that your infrastructure isn't built for it and you've got natural gas plants going offline because the uh, their their pipelines are or their lines anyway are, are freezing and you've got um, wind turbines that are icing up and going offline. Have I got that right? Yeah, so we've we've got kind of a, a cascading failures in, in multiple different grids like um just back up a little bit of backup you know texas is a it's a summer peaking system like we size our things for hot summer afternoons when it's 42 degrees outside and we're all trying to you know cool our houses down um the difference between why we're able to do that then and we're not able to do it now is we have competition for natural gas about 40 percent of homes in texas use gas for business of homes the businesses use gas to heat them heat their homes and they're 60 percent use electricity so there's competition for that gas now to, to complicate that, gas wells out in West Texas are getting so cold, they're freezing. And so we don't have supply going into the system, and we've got record supply trying to go out of the system. And what we end up doing is we've depressurized our gas lines. And when that happens, it's like if the fuel pump goes out in a car and the engine can't get fuel, if gas, if gas plants can't get gas at a certain pressure, they can't either run at full output or they have to run or they can't run at all. And to put all the numbers just into one big context, you know, ERCOT said yesterday, ERCOT's a grid operator for Texas, they said yesterday that about a third of our thermal fleet is offline. So, you know, while yes, some of our wind is also offline because of icing issues, like a massive amount of our thermal capacity is also offline. Yeah, and a, a state of 27 million, almost the population of Canada, that's, that's no, small, uh, no small matter. So what are the what is ERCOT doing to uh, get that capacity back online? Yeah, so I mean, you know, what ERCOT's done in order to keep the grid uh, in a semi-stable position is we have blackouts across. I mean, right now, like my house in Austin, I, I was able to to go to a friend's house that has power and heat. And I'm one of the lucky ones. But my house in Austin haven't had power since two a.m. yesterday, and it's cold inside. Um, so ERCOT is trying to, you know conserve, keep the grid operational for as many people as they can. So they've had to shut some folks off. The problem is, is the prioritized circuits that they have to keep on with hospitals and police and EMS and um, critical infrastructure are taking up so much demand that they're not able to rotate outages very well. So a lot of folks have been out without power for a long time. So I mean, ERCOT is trying to get things online, but you know, there's, there's not that much really they can do. They can't change the weather and you know it's going to be cold again tonight and so it's just you know we're honestly probably just going to have to wait for the weather to change before we're able to meaningfully bring everyone back online now uh in Cal california uh, after their uh, disastrous summer there was uh, a lot of analysis about what went wrong and what the state has to do to prepare uh, for uh future uh really hot summers where they don't have enough electricity um what do you think uh, how is texas going to handle this yeah, so I mean, you know, we do plan for winter peaks, um, but this has been so much further beyond kind of what we've traditionally had to plan for. And so, I mean, I think we're going to have to plan for worse winter weather. Um, 
you know, it's just, it's unacceptable that 4 million people are without power right now in the coldest time weather that we've had basically ever. <laughs> um, and so we're going to have to do a better job planning. Um, I think it's probably going to ignite the debate uh, also about should we be better interconnected with other parts of the U.S. of the North American grid. You know, there are other part there are other grids on the East Coast that have plenty of power right now, and you know prices are normal, whereas our prices are redlined at ten thousand dollars a megawatt hour, and you know we could use all the power we could get right now because we have people who are cold. Um, you know, I think it's this is call it a black swan event or something you know a climate weirding you know type event but like we're we're going to have to better be prepared for something like this going forward so josh thank you very much for this really appreciate it thanks for having me i appreciate it